Hello and welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So I, I, I did a post, when was it? About a week ago about novations. Novations are complicated. I advise anybody who's new to the business not to really think about them. But what I said is that it is possible that during the novation, so just to reiterate, what a novation is that I go to contract to buy something, I then try and find a new buyer in the free market, uh, an end user buyer to buy it. And if they can buy it for more, I'll make the difference. But any cost, expenses, problems that happen in the middle are my are my responsibility. If that buyer doesn't perform, he can't close, he has, uses mortgage contingency, whatever it is, then I have to close on it. So I got a question. Why are you stuck with the purchase if the buyer falls through? Is that a legal issue you're saying? And I think <laughs> if you've watched other gurus in other places, what they've told you is that wholesaling is risk-free because you always have an out in your contract. You have this inspection contingency, right? And in 49 states, usually that's the case where I go to buy something and I got two weeks, three weeks, sometimes a month to go find a buyer. If I can't find a buyer, I say, sorry, I'm out. I want to be clear about how it works in New York. In New York, every single time I sign a contract, there are no contingencies. I have to either close or I can assign. Those are my two choices. That's it. I've never gone into a contract and got out of a contract unless there was a league, unless there was a title issue, right? I had one deal I spoke about before, big deal in East Hampton. I put $100,000 down, very stupid move. And then I realized there was a lead, there was a problem, right? A, a huge portion of the property had a scenic easement on it, which did not allow me to build because it was next to some, I don't know, conservancy, some area that was not allowed to be built on. And I couldn't build on a lot of, a big part of the property. Now, because of that, I was able to get my deposit back. But that's one out of hundreds, if not a thousand properties that I've gone into contract on. So when an ovation happens, if that buyer doesn't perform for whatever reason, I have to buy it for the property, for the price I agreed to. But understand that in almost every situation, when I go to contract on a property, the seller's getting that amount in New York, for sure. I don't have any outs. I don't have a mortgage contingency. I don't have an inspection contingency. People go, well, what does that mean? In New York, and only New York to the best of my knowledge, all inspections get done before the contract sign. So for example, I have a person who just agreed to a price on a property I'm selling. They did the inspection very quickly. They, they said, hey, we want you to fix X. Now I can say no, I can say yes, but whatever I say goes into the contract as a rider. There is no period of time where I can decide, hmm, let me think about this. That is other 49 states. In, other, in 49 other states, you basically, as a, as a buyer, have an out. And the seller knows that most of the time. So I want to be clear. So when, when I go into an ovation, an ovatable contract, right? And, and I'll, I'll just tell you how this usually comes about. And I'm, I'm going into, I just went into one right now. Um, I have a seller who wants a certain amount. I don't I don't feel comfortable going into that contract at that amount. So I said, if you give me um let me rephrase. I feel like it's a tight, tight deal at that number, right? Like if I buy the property at that number, I may lose a little bit of money. What I want to so I, I made a lower offer and I said I'll be happy to pay you the lower number. If you want your number, then you have to give me my terms. And what that means is that I need to be able to novate the contract. And nobody, including every almost every single attorney that exists, knows what a novate, novation means. It's it's a process, I think it was invented by Eric Brewer, about 15 years ago, yeah, around 2007, 2008, 2009, um, where I can replace myself with another buyer. And it took me months to wrap my head around this, why this works, how this works, why anybody would agree to it, how I'm protected. But in the, the basic gist of it is you go into contract, the, the writer to the contract says, I can novate it to a new buyer, which means I can find a new buyer to replace me. And when I find a new buyer to replace me, it's going to be at a higher price. I'm going to make the difference. But any costs, like I said, fees, problems fall on me. right? So I had an ovation recently where the buyer wanted me to build stairs to the back door and the buyer wanted termite treatment. Those things, did not they weren't so expensive, but the buyer may have wanted more things. Whatever it was, I agreed to do it. And the seller was fine with it, knowing that he was getting his number. 
And that's the basic reason why sellers will look at me. Now, very often, and through the years, if I would have had this as a tool, I could have made a lot more money because I could think of dozens, if not a hundred properties, maybe more, that I said no to because their number was just too a little too high. And you've got to understand in New York, sorry, my closing costs are exorbitant, right? Very reasonable for me to have to spend sixty to seventy thousand dollars to buy something, hold it for a few months, and then sell it. You want to know how that breaks down? I'll tell you. My closing costs on a buyer are usually about ten grand, right? There's legal fee, title charges are crazy, recording fees are insane. All these things are expensive, right? Just record the deed. If I get a mortgage, I got to record a mortgage. So, in essence. Uh, it's ten thousand dollars on the buy. Then, if I'm borrowing money, I have interest costs. I have t- I have to pay taxes, right? If I own something for f- even six months, very common, I'll own six eight thousand dollars in taxes. Some and then interest, I could have. You know, it depends on the size of the loan. It could be it could be twenty thirty thousand dollars in interest. Um, and then I, it's going to cost me usually fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to sell a property. Um, so I give an example very often of the property I bought in West Hempstead, where a seller called me and said, "Hey." My house is listed for sale. I immediately cut off. I said, we're probably not going to do business. She goes, just wait a minute. She goes, this is the address. I look it up. I go, she, she had it listed for 699000 I said, listen, your issue is you don't need me. Just list it for five ninety nine. You'll sell it right away. She goes, no, I want you to come anyway. When I hear that, I like that. I went there. I look at the house. House is in pretty good shape. Nice. It's in Cathedral Gardens. Very nice area. I tell her I can pay four twenty five for it. She goes, can you pay four fifty? I said, yeah, I buy it for four fifty. I had it sold to somebody else in a very short time for five seventy five. Right? I told her six hundred pounds sold for five seventy five. I, I just wanted it easy. I didn't, I didn't even list it. I found the buyer right away. So um, I probably should have listed it to be honest with you, but okay. Um, and I didn't make one hundred twenty five thousand dollars on it. I probably made sixty five to seventy thousand dollars because it cost me about sixty thousand dollars to do that. And because of the reasons I just told you, like, for example, I, I had to pay, a, a, uh, there was a buyer's agent. I had to pay him 2% on 575. That's over $11,000 just in just in those costs, right? And then I had all the other costs and that's what it ended up being. And, and it's very, and I knew that it would be. I, I wish I would have made $125,000. If I could have novated it for that, I could have. Um, but it wasn't possible in that situation. So you've got to understand in New York, you need bigger balls than any other state because there's no outs, right? Maybe you can get an, I'm not saying you can never get an inspection contingency. I'm really not. It's just not typical, right? And you've got to understand why that is. Unlike 49 states where a transaction takes place between a buyer and a seller, in New York, the transaction takes place between a seller's attorney and a buyer's attorney. That means a seller's attorney has to prepare a, co- prepare a contract. Sales attorney is not going to prepare a contract where a buyer has a three-week inspection contingency because they know that the buyer may just walk away. And the seller does, sales attorney doesn't want to spend his time on that. So because of that, it's almost it, it's cop it's very, very rare to get an inspection contingency. Almost never. So I will say that um sometimes we use option contracts. Sometimes. Uh that's a tool that I've been using lately. Thanks to Greg Helbeck. He helped me with that. Um, but I would think that. You need to understand in New York that when you go to contract, when you sign that contract, you send your EMD, you send that deposit. EMD stands for earnest money deposit. That's the money you're giving when you go to contract. You got to close or you got to assign or you're going to lose your deposit. And deposits are, are significant here, right? Very rare. I'll put in less than $5,000 on a, on a deal here, sometimes more. So you got to understand that's why you're going to get stuck on an ovation. If the buyer falls apart, you're going to have to close on it, right? So on this deal... I may have to close on it and I may make money or lose money on it. It's possible I could lose, right? But I've, I have limited downside based on the price and I have good upside if the buyer performs. So you have to weigh risk and reward in every situation. But most people, nine out of 10 people that are watching gurus on the internet and try to do this in New York will not go into it because they're not, they may not have the money or they're not willing to risk their money. So that's the basic gist of why I get stuck if I, if I, Try If I get an available contract, find a new buyer, and that buyer uh, flakes out and doesn't perform. Hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com or learntoflipandwholesale.com. 
If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching any media channel, please get the thumbs up. The likes really help the algorithm. A lot more people will be seeing my videos. So thank you very much for watching. And I post five times a week. I don't always know what to say. This came from a request from Shanti. So keep the keep the questions coming. The point of this channel is to help you. Um, you can ask anything. It doesn't have to be about the video you're watching. And if it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something I've covered recently, I'll send you a link to a video on it. If it's something new or something I haven't covered in a while, I will do a brand new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.